I'm just beginning to understand more and more what it means when the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. It literally means the carnal mind is an enemy of God. The carnal mind is hostile towards God. And it's so easy to look at that scripture and feel like you don't have a carnal mind because you're so receptive to everything that God does and his directions and his, his instructions. But you see, God's ways sometimes can challenge everything inside of us. He can challenge us down to our very moral fiber. For example, the widow of Zarephath. You've read the Bible and you've seen when, you know, Elijah came to this widow and God told Elijah to ask this lady for her very last meal. She was about to prepare her very last meal, feed her son, and they both die because there was um, drought in the land. There was farming in the land. And the direction from God was go to this woman's house. Ask her to make you a meal from her very last portion and give it to you. Now, let's be honest. Our natural lenses, when, if, if that thing happens in today's world, if you were watching from the outside and there was this man of God who asked someone for their very last whatever it is, it's easy to judge that situation, right? Like, well, I'm very selfish of him, right? Like, that's not very nice of him. But that way of thinking, the Bible says, is an enemy of God, is enmity against God, is hostile towards God. And it's very rough because <laughs> how do you know, right? How do you know? How do you discern? And Elijah went because he has been trained to obey the voice of God. He has been trained to understand when God is speaking. He knows for sure. This is the Lord. Imagine having to look at that woman and tell her all these things. And so that's the thing about even wanting to be nice and wanting to be a Christian at the same time. Sometimes it can't mix because nice is not a fruit of the spirit. Goodness is, you know, faithfulness, love, joy. And sometimes love for God will make you do certain things that don't look nice. Love for God will make you say certain things. Love for God will make you move a certain way. That's crazy. And I feel like God was not only testing that woman or he wasn't only trying to bless that woman, but that test also is for Elijah. Because imagine, just imagine, man, I would feel awful to have to go to someone and tell them, Knowing that I have quite a bit of food, having to go to someone and ask them to make me food. The last one, someone impoverished. So sometimes it actually takes faith to ask. Sometimes it takes faith to, it, it's a humbling. And, and, and sometimes it, it really takes a good measure of humility to even ask how much more to ask an impoverished person. And this is just a challenge for this year for you. Don't walk according to your thinking. You will think your way out of the move of God. Now, when this woman obeyed the voice of the prophet Elijah, she was blessed immensely. Like the jar of oil and the jar of barley in her home did not run dry. You know, she would just dip into it always when, whenever she needed. She would just dip into the oil whenever she needed. And the Bible says, that's the word that was spoken over her, that it will not run dry, and it did not. So that's a challenge for you and I this year. Like, have you been walking in and thinking in your carnal mind? You know what? This mind of ours can be our best friend, but also our greatest enemy, right? Have you always wanted to rationalize every voice of God you've heard? Like, cut this person off. No, that person, that person need God, you know? The voice of the Lord tells you, cut this person off. And you're like, no, maybe the, I'm the one supposed to evangelize to that person. Maybe I'm the catalyst to bring them to Christ. And the Lord is saying, no, you don't need them in your life. That work person, it's not a good influence on you. You know, that relationship, that job, it's time to pursue that career. Well, I don't have what it takes. You know, for every move of God, for every instruction from God, there is going to be 10,000 reasons to not follow it. And if you wait too long, if you want to rationalize it, God does not seek our counsel or our carnal mind to 
give us instructions. He goes directly to your spirit. Whenever he speaks, it's to your spirit. So be in tune this year with your spirit, not your flesh, not your mind, with your spirit. And start developing that keen sense of hearing. Keen sense of hearing. Not saying just because you hear, you're going to be able to implement. It's still going to be hard, but at least you're going to know that this is the voice of God. And so therefore, it's going to be easier to follow. Welcome to the new year.